Hi folks, it's Derek uh, from 4 Bible Adventure WA. Uh, here I am uh, in my friend's place, in my friend's shed, uh, trying to reorganize my setup. And uh, we're actually fixing a problem with the, uh, the, sub, uh, the diesel sub-tank. Uh, we noticed there's a bit of a leak, but hopefully that's not from the tank body. Uh, hopefully it's only from plumbing. Um, if you enjoy my video contents, please subscribe and uh, hit the like and, uh, and notify bell button. And I would like you to do that, and that supports me. Uh, anyway, let's give it a start. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Now, let me give you a first glimpse of uh, what it is after um, probably around one to two years of usage. Uh, so that obviously is a wheel arch um, sort of. An auxiliary fuel tank and it fits perfectly in between the two uh, the two wheel arch uh, the, the uh, whatever it is um, and you probably need some well, it, this product I don't remember what um, what brand it is RV accessories and as you can see it and um, they they've been really really good uh, that the products have been really really good for me you uh, you can actually get the fitting kit that goes on um, on the on the floor of the well body uh, but this is actually a DIY sort of thing you put an angle line there um, fasten it and you find some ways on the top to fasten it too so all you need to do is to bend a couple of um, flat bars uh, and you find some ways to sort of link them together and secure it um, so to give you a bit of idea that's the outlet um, yeah and uh, that you see there's a few holes and the hose goes through the grommet in the headboard and it kind of sort of plumps down uh, downwards to the main tank uh, through the return hose and it sort of returns to the main tank that way um, so number one advantage uh, the first thing I noticed from having an auxiliary fuel tank uh, obviously uh, ex extends your, uh, your kilometers um, it is a 40 liters, well it sets 40, uh, yeah, I think it sets 40 to 50, but uh, the, the real usable uh, liters is around 37. So you can't really fill it up any more, more than 37 or 38. Um, so it does extend quite a fair bit. Uh, I reckon it's probably close to set, uh, the usable liters, probably 700 to 800 uh, kilometers. Uh, that's a fair distance, really. Number two advantage of having a diesel tank like this, a wheel arch type diesel tank, is that it uh, it kind of sits very well on the well body. It's designed for use in well body, and um, it gives you the sort of a really good use of space uh, because you can't really put many things between the, the wheel arches um, and and also well, they both weigh around 40 kilograms uh, to add them up together around 80 kilograms at the um, strongest spot of the chassis so what's below here is a rear axle and the rear axle uh, we're well, having the heaviest weight on the rear axle is best uh, it's best weight distribution for the car and um, and and also the shape of it it fits well um, where it should be. And advantage number three, uh, that's basically is a really really strong plastic. Uh, we've got no issue in um, in breakage uh, so far. But remember, my advice to you: when you have things side by side uh, together. You, you are probably better to have something like this to, to absorb a bit of um, vibration, especially when you go out uh, adventuring uh, on, um, on off-road situation. Uh, you get lots of vibrations and heaps of, what do you call them? Corrugations. Um, yeah, and over time, things will just break. Right, so that's basically the good things about the, um, the, the diesel sub tanks. Uh, and the water sub tank as well. Um, so, number one, disadvantage, um, and it's actually quite important as well. 
So um, this could be the cat uh, catastrophic problem. Uh, I mean, this one of these is like 40 liters. Uh, if you ever have a hole somewhere, you lose the whole 40 liters. So that's probably the only biggest disadvantage, true disadvantage, um, over the the jerry cans. Um, and likewise with fuel, if you're in the middle of nowhere, you all, all of a sudden it starts leaking, and it um, doesn't matter how fast it leaks, your uh, your whole 40 liters disappears. Um, so that is not ideal, obviously. It's, it's not just not ideal, it's, it's catastrophic. So, I um, let me remind you why why uh, why I'm actually here in my friend's place. We are here to investigate a bit of fuel leak from this sub tank. Um, right after after a bit of distance of driving, I noticed uh, there has been a bit of dripping in diesel, and it's a fairly slow slow rate. But the the, the dripping is fast enough to to be noticed uh, on the diff, a bit of shiny diff on on uh, on there. So. We are thinking that's this bunk there. If you can see it, that bunk there might have contributed to a bit of leak and maybe a bit of plumbing in here as well. Uh, we're, we're going to check this out a little bit later. So, so we reckon what's wrong was uh, that was ages ago when I, when I assembled this plumbing. I used a bit of water thread tape for the fuel system, which is wrong. Um, so we are going to do it once and do it right. We'll, we're going to take all the plumbings out, um, put the correct fret tape, um, and put it back together. It's not really a tape; it's a fret liquid, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to uh, our our local auto store and get something, get something uh, appropriate to put it back on, and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Right, um, so we are back from the uh, auto store. Uh, we've got one of those liquid sealants, such as this. And um, yeah, learn from a mistake. Remember from a fuel container, you need to use something that is oil, uh, diesel compatible. And apparently that is a liquid. So do not use thread tape that is designed for water on diesel. Uh, so we're going to tighten this as much as we can. Alright, so we're going to put this paste on this thread again and according to the instruction um, you do not apply the paste in the first uh, first thread but you do apply around three quarters of the whole circumference. Oh, the, the three quarters of the whole circumference like so. Where did I put the spanner? Uh, very good question. Over there. Okay, I'll take the spanner. That one. Yep. That's a 14, isn't it? Oh, is it? Oh, yep. Whatever it is. Yeah, if it says 14 on there, alright. Yeah, okay. Yep, that's how you do it properly. And then we um, will just repeat the whole process of this thread and vice versa. Alright, disadvantage number two. Um, I'm not sure, oh, you can probably see it already, it leaves you a, a big, big mess uh, in here. Well, that's probably something you have to live with, with, the, uh, with whale body. Um, after venturing 1000 Ks, 2000 Ks, uh, you, you collect a bit of dust and you can't, this is, when you have this sort of water and fuel tank, you don't really want to access um, these spots all the time and they become filthy all the time and uh, who, I mean who cares, I'm pretty happy about it because I, I don't have to see it all the time um, the only time is when you have to fix it and, uh, and you will see it how, how, how dirty it is alright folks, that's it for now um, the advantage and the, uh, and the disadvantages of this uh, RV accessory uh, tank system and they have been really good products but they are just things that you have to live with and uh, every now and again, you might have to just pull out everything and um, maybe do a quick fix. Um, I, I suggest maybe once, even once every year, once half a year if you can, um, that will be ideal. Just clean up everything, it's probably good for your car anyway. Um, so, 
if you enjoyed the video content, subscribe and uh, hit the notify bell button. Um, and I'll see you next time.